Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? Um, no, you got to guess. Pickled pig's feet. No, no. But let, let's let forget that for a moment and talk about something else. Bunny. Yes. This is the part of the show right before the homework segment where I go off on a funny and hyperactive segment about everything and nothing. It's funny <laughs> and pointless. And I swear that I'll get back to that. Uh, next week, but I just want you to know I freaking adore you, buddy. Okay. I I had what I considered a dream job for maybe about 69% of the time. There was a time in California that that they were looking for reasons to fire people that worked there for a really long time, and it was a witch hunt. But even yeah. then, when I was getting pointlessly written up every second, even then, my store said, well, we can't fire Mr. Steve. I mean, there would be riots. People would be so upset. There's no way we can ever fire him. Yeah. But anyway, being let go, it really teaches you what's important. And and there are some very important things in my life. My wife and my kids and my story time. And, and you, Bunny and Jeannie and this podcast, I adore you. And I worry about you, and I want you to be okay. And when my psychic mind powers told me that something, that something was happening at work, and I didn't know what, and I had no proof, I just knew that it was something yeah. that was happening, the first thing I did was tell you guys, because you and Jeannie are absolutely family to me. Thank you. I want to make sure that you guys know that. So how are you, Bunny? How are you doing? Um... <laughs> I, I i went to starbucks today nice did you get an afro-cuban cd no did they have them i didn't know they had them i don't know the last time no, i went to no starbucks, but you have to realize this this was a big thing good 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 to go in actually went That's, in I, it was awesome i really like it I really like Starbucks. Yeah. Starbucks coffee makes you go, well, they must know what they're doing. They're a major company. I guess maybe <laughs> coffee is supposed to taste this way. <laughs> I, I I know. I, I, I feel like Dennis Leary, you know? Yeah. yeah. Who, who, frankly, I've never found Dennis Leary particularly funny. But, but, but yeah, like, I, I want coffee-flavored coffee. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's how I've always been with coffee. And the code you people speak in scares me. That oh yeah. Scary, I, yeah, I never wrapped my head around that. But double, I get double, um, dipple, yeah. triple shot, no phone, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I get a lot, a lot of Starbucks gift cards from parents. As like Christmas gifts or teacher appreciation day, whatever. So yeah, after Christmas I had like, I have a Starbucks gold card. I had like $80 worth of, of credit on my card. <laughs> so we're still working that off. <laughs> nice. So well, other than that, I'm just, I'm just working on working through some shit, you know? Okay. Okay. Which, well, which, like, I can't even describe. I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just somewhere stopped being me, and I don't like that. Yeah. You know, kind of think, like, maybe you woke up and you were like, you know, fuck this story time shit. You know? Yeah. That's That's the weird kind of place I'm in. You know? Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Well, I wish you the absolute best, Bunny. <laughs> Thank you. And I want you to know, without getting too choked up here, I want you to know how much you mean to me. You're an awesome person, and I love this podcast. Thank and you. so... We and love so you too, man. Oh, Jeannie's crying. Not crying, but 
It is emotional. I do get emotional. <laughs> and so, with just a wee bit more ado, it's homework time once again on the old Pope on <laughs> Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your dabbing and kindly pay attention. <laughs> Each week, the dreaded Council of Bookstore Corporate Executives descends from on high and selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment that has been ratified, fortified, and some third wordified with the expressed intent of bettering our listeners, nay, all good people everywhere. So you just stay in your corner, Dinesh D'Souza. Yeah. We're not allowed. No. <laughs> I had to describe to three different people today who Dinesh D'Souza was over this past few days. I, I, I've, I've forgotten. I know I know that name. He's a racist SOB. Oh. Okay. okay. That covers a- half of fucking America these days. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to come a little closer. <laughs> yeah. And this week, we will be attempting to draw a line between 1999's Bam Majera and 2018's Logan Paul with a long form news article from page6.com entitled Jackass Left a Wake. Of pain, drugs, and addiction. Yes. I have to be honest, straight up front, I can't help but think, yeah, fuck them. (laughs) You know, I mean, I I guess I'm sorry, but like if anybody did it to themselves. Are you still there? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Stop it. I lost you again, I think. Sizzling? I'm hearing like a sizzling noise. Do that's, you hear that? That's Genie with the Instapot. Uh, are you hearing him? Okay. I, I hear you you just breaking up a little. Let's just try to keep going. Eleanor, stop hitting. Eleanor. Eleanor, stop hitting everybody. Man, she is becoming violent. So she this is, is a how, terrorist. Yeah. So this is how it goes. Early 1990s, MTV, back when they still kinda played music videos, the king of Stupid cartoon. Two food assholes called uh, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I keep losing you, dude. Let's try replacing the call. Okay. All right. I'm going to hang up. You call me back. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me all right? That sounds a lot better. Okay, cool. Uh, hold on, let me take a bite of my food. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start at the beginning. So this is how it goes. It's the early 1990s. MTV, back when they still kind of played music videos, the king of the network at the time was a very stupid and very cheaply done cartoon about two poor, rude, asshole kids called Beavis and Butthead. Yes. And I'm sorry, unpopular opinion here, that cartoon turned a nation of teenagers into rude little shitheads who didn't give a fuck. I firmly believe that my judge followed up Beavis and Butthead with King of the Hill as a sort of penance. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry, America. I'm sorry that um, I um, 
created a whole generation of shitty kids who hate their parents and hate authority and do whatever the hell they want. Basically, Beavis and Butthead created grunge. Uh, you know, yeah, I can see that. I can see so that. to make it up to you, here's 13 seasons and over 250 episodes of a good-natured, down-to-earth American family in Texas. <laughs> yeah. It was penance. Well, I think he also needed to show that he himself is not an idiot. You know, yeah. I mean, because cause I liked Beavis and Butthead, you know, but like if that's the only thing on your resume, I'm probably not hiring you. Yeah. Yeah. So after Beavis and Butthead, MTV needed something new and unique and different. So they took a chance on a Beatles-taught young musician who created an entire show using a camera, a laptop, a green screen, and a shitload of socks. <laughs> the show was a quirky underground hit, but a massive ratings failure for MTV. So Syphil and Ollie, which was supposed to uh, replace Beavis and Butthead, Syphil and Ollie was pushed aside. No! After two seasons for a crazy, in-your-face, experimental Canadian Andy Kaufman-style prankster named Tom Green. Yes. The man was literally picked out of Canadian public access and given his own MTV show. Really? Yeah. He would just literally go on the street and start filming and start fucking with people. It was really weird. There's one skit that he did that I loved. And he's just walking down the street and he sees a pigeon on the road, uh, on the sidewalk. And he tries to interview the pigeon. And the pigeon tries to get away. The pigeon is in front of a bank. And Tom Green goes, oh, it looks like this pigeon wants to get into this bank. Let's let the pigeon into the bank. So he lets the pigeon into the bank. <laughs> Then starts filming the bank people. Hey, uh, somebody let a pigeon into the bank. <laughs> the show was a hit, and I, I always really get him confused with Andy Dick for some reason. They don't look alike or anything like that, but for some reason they 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 make the same connection in my head. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. I liked Tom Green right up to the point where in his greatest and also worst prank ever, a Hollywood film studio gave him a movie. Uh, and yeah. knowing, and then Tom Green said, well, only an idiot would give me a movie. So I'm going to go out of my way to make an unwatchable film. <laughs> okay. Knowing how stupid of a of a move that was, he went over, he went about purposefully making one of the worst movies ever made. He basically conned a movie studio into giving him fifteen million dollars, which he used to make a conceptual assertist attack on both the film studio and the people who paid to see the movie. All right, that basically the whole thing was a joke, and you went to go see Tom Green's movie, and then it it quickly becomes evident that like okay. Studio was stupid to give me a movie, and all of you who are watching this are stupid for watching this. Uh, are you sure he meant to make a bad movie, or is he trying to weaso it? Hey, it, it it's it's unclear. Uh huh. Any man extent in his movie where carcass? That's that's not. You are breaking up a, a lot again. Yeah, I, all I can hear is, is a bunch of noise. Like, 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 it's almost as if Genie is literally cleaning top. <laughs> uh, well, she's cooking, but but. Uh... Then I get quiet because I'm trying to see if if I can hear you. Yeah. Which is being a little bitch. Yeah. But you're better now. Go ahead. Okay. Good. Um. Uh. 
Tom Green was eventually replaced slash tossed aside, which is what MTV likes to do, by a number of separate groups of violent, risk-taking young men uh, whom MTV brought together under the name Jackass. It's important to note that these were separate groups. Really? Okay. Yeah. Steve-O was doing skateboarding videos, and he peppered them with clips of him doing dangerous, dumb, violent stunts. Like he would set his uh, his body on fire and he would jump off of very high bridges and shit like that. Yeah. Then, like in the Midwest, there was a Danger Aaron and his friends. They were basically doing Super Dave stunts, except they would literally do the dumb stunt. Oh, okay. <clears throat> then Bam Margera, who was very young, he was still like a teenager. Uh, him and his friends would release, they released a series of videos called CKY, uh, which stood for Camp Kill Yourself. Okay. Those videos, those videos were very popular, like underground videos of them doing really stupid things. MTV saw all of these three groups and said, what if we combine them? So they hired Johnny Knoxville to do one or two stunts and to sort of be the face of this new show. And that's how Jackass was born. In fact, these different groups of people never met each other until season two. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, weird... I, I just never had any kind of interest in this show. I had heard some things about it, and I didn't like what I heard. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I yeah. don't want to see them drink their own pee you know yeah so this article sort of connects the dots to jackass back then and jackass now i wasn't really into jackass on mtv because i was still bitter about mtv's treatment of syphil and ollie yeah. i never really cared about jackass until their first movie came out which technically is still the number one highest grossing documentary of all time <laughs> really uh, technically, I guess it would be considered a documentary. Yeah. What else would you consider it? Because it literally is just a group of people doing stunts. That's not a scripted comedy, you know? No, not at all. Yeah. So technically, the first Jackass film is the highest grossing documentary of all time. But even in my 20s, I was like a rational dude. So I'm watching these jackass guys get bitten by anacondas and get shot in the balls and mauled by bulls. And I'm thinking, what will this do to them in their 40s and 50s? <laughs> and thanks to this article, we now know their post jackass lives were filled with drug addiction, numerous surgeries, and in, in at least one case, death. Yes. Danger Aaron has had a crap ton of surgeries and broken backs. Rab himself, who they really focus on in the article, despite the fact that he was never like a major part of Jackass, uh, he had he battled drug and alcohol addiction. Steve-O has been in and out of jail. And after the death of his BFF, CKY's Bam Margera is currently in rehab. Yay! Mm -hmm. um, at least none of us really have to see um Johnny Knoxville anymore. That's a positive. <laughs> but of all the spin-offs and movies and Jackass presents Bad Grandpa, which I never bothered to watch, of all the spin-offs and stuff, I got to say there was one spin-off they did that was wonderful. Yeah. It's like 10 times better than Jackass. It was so good. It was a show called Wild Boys with a Z. Double flavor. Yeah, and it was Steve-O and Chris Pontius. It ran for four seasons, and it was basically Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom with two semi-naked jackasses who don't care about their own well-being. <laughs> okay. yeah. It was an awesome show. It was so good. It was so good. And they would literally be traveling the globe, meeting these different animals and just being stupid. Yeah. It was amazing. Bad Grandpa, I remember the commercials looked kind of amusing, you know, but not, like, really funny. Yeah. And it, and it also kind of looked like what we were talking about with Kung Fury. Like, I don't know if I could do an hour and a half of that. 
Yeah, it just looked like Jackass said, hey, why don't we do a Borat? Yeah. That's what I that's what I saw I, that I, grand being. I think technically it's pull a Borat. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Um and yeah, no, it, it, if you can find Wild Boys, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing show. Just these two guys being dumb in nature. <laughs> it's really cool. I love it so much. It was so good. Yeah. Jackass, not so much, but Wild Boys, that was amazing. That was that was incredible. Anyway, that's it for homework this week. And we we legitimately and respectfully hope so respitfully. We sincerely hope that your hearts, minds, and disastrous credit scores have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho, which is a combination of Bucko and Muchacho, verbal copyright 2018, on Dead Cow Studios and the Pobon film. <laughs> don't forget next week's homework assignment, and for next week, we're going to be trying to catch up with some old news by reading a Vulture.com interview with Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Okay. I already sent this to you. It's it's in uh, Facebook Messenger. Have you heard about this interview? No. It covers everything from Michael Jackson to who killed John F. Kennedy. It really is like a batshit crazy interview. Yeah. There's like a bajillion things in there. It's 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 a ridiculous interview. So that, that that would be interesting because Quincy Jones was pretty interesting, <laughs> and yeah, he he was like uh all over. He was not just Michael Jackson; he was his own dude, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not like Elvis and what the Captain and what and Tennille with Elvis. Uh, the Colonel. Colonel, the Colonel. That's it. The Colonel. Yeah. Tom Parker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got involved with Michael Jackson just because, well, he's like the best. Yeah. You know? Not like they knew each other in any other way. Yeah. So that should be interesting. Yeah, no, it's a good article. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut on that. <sighs>